My name is Josh from Cyclone to Oz, and I've got a detailed forecast update in regards to the Southeast Queensland severe thunderstorm outlook for this weekend, including today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Very significant severe thunderstorms are possible with one of the largest outbreaks of the storm season now in the models for Saturday afternoon. I'll have details on other weather events happening around Australia as well, plus the rainfall situation up in northern Queensland. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning with a couple of thunderstorms offshore currently from Southeast Queensland, and today likely to be a significant significant thunderstorm day for a few locations, particularly onto parts of the Sunshine Coast and inland into the South Burnett Forecast District towards the north of Brisbane. But you can see a couple of th the, 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 uh, the thunderstorms just offshore right now, one of them moving offshore from the Gold Coast, and a couple of these storms have provided some much needed rainfall again overnight. So these thunderstorms here, very much welcome indeed, but they have nothing on what we are expecting, not only just today, but also on tomorrow. So some significant thunderstorm activity is, as mentioned, a possibility throughout the course of this afternoon and this evening, particularly towards the north of Brisbane in the South Burnett Forecast District and north of the Wyvernhoe Outlook around the Gympie area and then inland towards Goomeri, north to Guyanda, Mount Perry and Tyro. Some significant severe thunderstorm activity is a possibility. The environment is very, very favourable for severe thunderstorms and potentially some organised severe thunderstorms as well, except there is one factor holding it back and that is going to be convective available potential energy values. Now, convective available potential energy values is our instability in the environment and that is what creates us those very strong severe thunderstorms and unfortunately for a few of these thunderstorms they're going to find themselves in environments where these cape values are closer to 800, 900 or 1000 and that's just really not enough to get the trick done for some of the strong severe thunderstorms that we're used to seeing at this time of the year in southeast Queensland. Along the Capricornia coastline chances are better for severe thunderstorm activity and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw one or two very strong severe thunderstorms in this second circle up here inland from Gladstone and Agnes Water. Definitely a possibility later this afternoon into this evening but around the Kingaroo and the Gympie area if thunderstorms do get themselves going, they'll be like yesterday. It's pretty short-lived, pretty tame, and not anything too crazy, even though they could drop some hailstones and almost go supercellular in nature. In terms of the thunderstorm situation around the Gold Coast and the Brisbane area, there is a chance of thunderstorms towards the southeast of Brisbane uh, and also towards the southwest of Brisbane around the Gold Coast area, but chances are pretty minimal at this point in time, and it looks like all of this storm activity is going to bypass the Brisbane city area, which means Halloween 2025 is unlikely to be a washout. However, my advice for the trickle treating this afternoon and this evening is around three and four o'clock. Just keep close tabs on the radar imagery at the old bomb website reg.bomb.gov.au just to make sure that you are in the know in regards to what rainfall is in the vicinity and if any of these showers or thunderstorms are moving your way because tonight's uh, storm forecast you could call it a coin toss it really could go either way. Now what's not going to go either way is the storm forecast for tomorrow afternoon and evening. Far out is expected to be a strong one. I mean have a look at this we're expecting lots of severe thunderstorm activity and it's likely to get itself going pretty early on in the morning. There's one factor that I have just noticed though that could hold tomorrow back a little bit, especially for locations a little bit closer to the coastline, and it's one of the reasons why some of the storms are expected to be substantially stronger just inland and then out in towards the uh, Darling Downs and Granite Belt sort of area in these two circles, and that is this thunderstorm here. We are expecting storm activity to push up the uh, southeast Queensland coastline early tomorrow morning, and that will likely result in some significant uh, cloud cover, particularly early on in the morning, and if that doesn't clear by about 10 or 11 o'clock in the afternoon, it will definitely thwart some of those significant storm chances, particularly for the Sunshine Coast and also for the Southeast Queensland coastline. But in all fairness, conditions tomorrow are just so excellent for severe thunderstorm activity. They are so healthy and they look so uh, just ripe for severe thunderstorm development, for lack of a better term, that there's not really going to be much that could stand in the way of severe thunderstorms developing tomorrow afternoon and evening. And Brisbane and the Gold Coast, you are on notice for, pot for potentially some of the strongest severe thunderstorm activity you've seen in the last couple of years. Not just this storm season, but since the Christmas thunderstorms that uh, occurred back in 2023. So thunderstorms are expected to get themselves going from about midday over the border and towards the northeast of New South Wales, and then about two o'clock over the border in towards Queensland. Significant severe thunderstorms are likely pretty much straight away, especially on the Queensland side of things, and organised supercell thunderstorm development is expected to occur very quickly on in the afternoon. This is the picture at four o'clock, and lots of thunderstorm activity is expected to be uh, pictured uh, right through southeast Queensland. You can see a strong amount of thunderstorm activity expected towards the west and southwest of Toowoomba and thunderstorms now beginning to get themselves going in towards Queensland supercell alley towards the west of the Gold Coast through the scenic rim and towards the southwest of Brisbane. We'll also have some pulse thunderstorm activity that could turn supercellular at times around Biloela and Eidsvold inland from the Capricornia coastline and that will only get stronger throughout the course of the afternoon and the evening as well. Pushing at four to five o'clock and six o'clock at which is pictured you can see very strong severe thunderstorm activity is expected to begin consolidating through southern 
southern Queensland around the border. And it's just going to be thunderstorm after thunderstorm after thunderstorm for these locations. A lot of stuff is going to blow up, collapse in on itself, and then continue blowing up afterwards. And then by around six o'clock, a lot of this stuff is then going to begin upscaling into what's going to be a multicellular uh, school line, very similar to what we saw last weekend that blew up the Sunshine Coast, bringing some very strong winds and brief periods of heavy rainfall, and then make a beeline for the Brisbane and the Gold Coast city areas. So you've kind of got two outbreaks coming through tomorrow, particularly into the scenic rim towards the southwest of Brisbane. You've got the initial thunderstorm activity, which is that high risk, highly powerful supercell activity early on in the afternoon and evening between four o'clock and six o'clock. And then the, uh, this massive line of thunderstorms that's expected to have embedded supercells are at the very least some very powerful squall lines moving through later on in the evening at around seven or eight o'clock. And then that will push into the Brisbane area and the Gold Coast area, like I said, around seven or eight o'clock. And then up into the southern parts of the Sunshine Coast, I'll also be talking Maroochydore and up towards Noosa and even inland towards Gympie by around 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening as well. And it's expected to be a pretty uh, powerful upscaled squall line at that point in time. This is a picture at 8 o'clock and you can see it moving off and weakening as that picture continues to push later on into the night. Also some strong thunderstorm activity expected up into the top of your screen here. Closer to the coastline though, inland from Rockhampton. But if we push this forecast forward, you can see the Rockhampton dome looks like it's going to hold strong. Now the risk for the Capricornia coastline, so Rockhampton, Gladstone, Agnes Water and and also Harvey Bay by extension tomorrow afternoon and evening is actually pretty minimal at this point in time. Not anything too crazy in the way of significant severe thunderstorm activity is expected up there. And also by extension down to the Fraser coastline and the northern parts of the Sunshine Coast now, particularly for locations north of Noosa. In fact, I'll just circle those areas now for ease. These are the locations that aren't really at a high risk anymore for Saturday afternoon and evening. We're not really talking about significant severe thunderstorms in any of these locations. The strongest stuff is going to happen a little bit further inland and then of course, down in towards southeastern and southern Queensland as well. And you can see the strongest thunderstorm activity expected to occur in this yellow shading through here towards the south of Toowoomba and basically covering out the rest of the Queensland side of things north of the border here. So Warwick, Stanthorpe, those locations all could be seeing some very significant organized severe thunderstorm activity. So blue looking slightly weaker. Red is where thunderstorms are likely, but likely to be of that kind of regular variety across southeast Queensland. And then yellow is going to be our rare variety, those really strong severe thunderstorms that we do not see. Uh, all that often across southeast Queensland. So think supercells and powerful supercells at that. The risks for tomorrow include giant hailstones. There's a really significant risk of some very large hailstones developing through tomorrow afternoon and evening. It's not only going to be a very moist environment, but we're also going to have that dry slot and a lot of energy in the environment here. You can see these values here in the mid-levels. Convective available potential energy well above 3,000 in a few spots, and that's going to push in towards southeast Queensland through the lower levels as well as we get out through Saturday afternoon and evening. And those values here, uh, they're just jet fuel for severe thunderstorm activity. Really significant severe thunderstorms are expected to develop as a result of this, and we could be seeing something really gnarly developing through these parts of Queensland uh, once these Cape values do really mix through the environment. And again, if we have a look at a convective sounding as well from the East Moore forecast model, you can see that dry slot expected around that 500 HPA range, and this is at four o'clock in the afternoon, so just prime time for these severe thunderstorms to develop. A very highly wind sheet environment, lots of moisture right through the environment as well, and like I said, that dry slot, very healthy for severe thunderstorms and this is towards the north of Brisbane. It only gets better the further south of Brisbane you go so you can imagine the picture that we're beginning to paint across these locations here. Now if I circle your location this includes Ipswich, Boona, Bow Desert and also by extension out towards Warwick as well uh, and inland from the Gold Coast through the hinterland and then out towards the scenic rim. This is our places to watch. Very significant severe thunderstorm activity is expected through these locations early on in the afternoon in the initial outbreak and then later on in the afternoon and the evening we're expecting these squall lines potentially with embedded supercell activity to move through the purple area and that encompasses Brisbane and the Gold Coast as well. This setup is uncannily similar to the setup that we had in December of 2023 for severe thunderstorm activity through southeast Queensland. I didn't track that very closely but I've been told by numerous trackers and chasers alike that this setup is very very similar to that and we may be ending the night off with some very similar severe thunderstorm activity. So for southeast Queensland watch out it could be very potent indeed. Now, I would just like to say that it is important to begin making preparations ahead of these thunderstorms through southeast Queensland. This is a gnarly severe thunderstorm outbreak on the cards in a few of your locations, including those north of the Wyvernhoe outlooks, so Gympie, Kingaroy, Kilcoy. You're expecting thunderstorms tonight, tomorrow night in a pretty significant capacity, and Sunday night as well in a potentially significant severe capacity too. So make sure you are tidying up the backyard, pruning up the garden, and making sure there's no hazard to your home in terms of trees snapping or things flying around the backyard because the winds are expected to be very strong.
We're expecting large, potentially giant hailstones up towards that five or six centimeter in diameter size. Wind gusts up to 125 kilometers an hour are also very much a likely possibility to occur. Heavy to locally intense rainfall, which could max out at 75 millimeters an hour, particularly from when those storm lines do upscale and move through later on on Saturday night, specifically through Southeast Queensland. And we've also got a very healthy setup for tornadoes as well. And tornadic supercell activity is expected towards the south uh, southwest of Brisbane. So uh, Boona, uh, south of Harrisville and Ipswich, and then further inland from Warwick as well through the Downs area, will likely be seeing some significant supercell thunderstorm activity, which could throw out a tornado or two as well. So you have been warned very significant. Some of the most powerful severe thunderstorm activity that I've seen in the last couple of years is on the setup as we look ahead in towards Saturday. This is not a setup to be playing around with. As with all thunderstorms, they're not going to be everywhere all the time. So there will be places that do miss out completely. It does not constitute a fizzer if your location does miss out. The chances are very high for severe thunderstorms, but as always, they're not widespread enough to be guaranteed. So watch out, make sure you are prepared and it is much better to be safe than it is to be sorry in an event like this. We always prepare for the worst, but hope for the best in situations like this. And definitely areas south of Brisbane, I, I don't see a way that you get out of this. I don't see a way that south of Brisbane and including inland from the Gold Coast, the Scenic Rim and the Hinterland as, as well. And then through parts of the Ipswich and the Harrisville area, I really don't see a way that you get out of severe thunderstorms here. Also towards the north of Brisbane, Caboolture and the Samford Valley, a bit of an overlooked area in this forecast update so far. My apologies. Again, I really don't see a way that you get out of these severe thunderstorms. They are going to occur in these locations. So make sure you are ready for them. Now, pushing things forward, we do have more thunderstorms expected on Sunday as well. They're going to be a bit more severe further inland, so north of Kingaroo up towards Gympie, Eidsvold, and Tyro, those locations. Uh, it definitely looks like a more kind of inland-focused outbreak. So for these locations here that I'm circling, and this will also include Toowoomba and Ipswich as well. Strong severe thunderstorm activity is a possibility now on Sunday afternoon and evening, and then just pushing this forward uh, through a little bit uh, further out towards Monday. Severe thunderstorms are also a weak possibility on the New South Wales side of things. South of uh, Gundawindi down towards Maury, Inverell, and Narrabri, and then inland from Coffs Harbour up towards Grafton, Lismore, Yamba, those sort of locations. And then later on, we may see a line of strong thunderstorms developing as this kind of cold front slash, or not cold front, but this low pressure system moves through. And that will bring thunderstorms and shower activity late Monday night into early Tuesday morning ahead of it. Some of this stuff will have damaging winds and also likely a substantial amount of rainfall as it moves through. And this will just create a wet picture across Southeast Queensland through Monday night and into early Tuesday morning on the 4th of November. Very good stuff indeed more much needed rainfall. Uh, and that is my message to you. In terms of other interesting stuff happening around Queensland, not an awful lot to talk about. We do have some rainfall from thunderstorms forecast up in towards northern Queensland. Again, a couple of convective-based thunderstorms are a possibility this afternoon and this evening. Nothing too crazy is expected, though, uh, and most likely, again, over from the Atherton Tablelands, inland from Atherton, Ravenstow, and Mariba. And we may be seeing, again, some good hail uh, up in these locations. There's been some cracker thunderstorms in this part of Queensland in the last couple of days. Very, very impressive to see but they should peter out as we get out towards the later parts of this weekend. Limited thunderstorm activity is expected through northern Queensland. And again, by extension, very limited rainfall activity is also on the cards across northern Queensland as we push things forward, which is quite unusual for this time of the year. We're definitely expecting to see rainfall pipe up very, very soon. Now, I have noticed a bit of a feature as we get later on into the forecast model, specifically after the 10th of November, a large cutoff low pressure system could bring a widespread swathe of rainfall to a very extensive range of locations through Queensland and New South Wales and it's pretty much uh, supported as well between major forecast models. The GFS also very much on board with a large low pressure system that would track through somewhere on a line like this through South Australia and towards New South Wales and bring rainfall to a very wide swathe of locations, including Southern Queensland and much of New South Wales as well. And these places could be seeing anywhere between 10 to 50 millimetres of rainfall. It's nothing crazy or nothing that's going to cause widespread flooding. But again, similar to what we saw earlier on in the week, we may be seeing some significant rainfall accumulations in places that do really badly need it. We're hoping that this does maintain all the forecast models. At this point in time, it's very much a coin toss, 50-50, because we are looking quite long range. But considering other major forecast models are now starting to get behind this low pressure system, it may be time to start thinking about expecting some half decent rainfall accumulations as we head out towards mid-November, which is some good news indeed. A lot of these places are still really badly in need of rainfall, so very, very good to be able to report on that, that's for sure. 
Now, there is heaps of other stuff happened around the Australian weather scene, but I'm going to have to leave this video update here. We're covering Southeast Queensland and Southeast Queensland only over the next couple of days. I'm going to have a second update on this uh, later today, and if I don't, I'll be running live coverage. Specifically, if we do see severe thunderstorms developing into the Kingaroo and the Gympie areas, so make sure you do stick around for that. And I'll be also going over the forecast and what we can be expecting tomorrow afternoon and evening across Southeast Queensland on that live coverage. So subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you do leave a like on the video update as well. But I'm going to leave it here. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run this show without them. And as always, their support is massively appreciated. But thank you so much to all of the support recently. And I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.